everybody and welcome or welcome back to my youtube channel my name is jess and this intro will be a repeating intro for the next kind of four to five videos on my channel i am back from taking a long break from posting content on this youtube channel i was busy finishing my third and final year of university so i was just in a very very stressful period of life i was making plans for my life after uni as most uni students do and just took some time to think process and really just kind of be with my family and friends and soak in and work my ass off for the last couple of months. Within this time frame, I was still filming videos. So I have videos from April, from halfway through April, May and June that I still have that are filmed and I am slowly working my way through editing and I have a couple that are already pre-edited and ready to go. In saying that, I do want to still release that content to you but to be able to share them, I need to do this intro. Hey everybody and welcome, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Jess and today's video is going to be my June Defeated TBR update. I'm so excited to film this. At the end of May, I had 54 books on my physical TBR that I already owned and I would like to say this is because I had an unhaul um, in the month of May. I unhauled quite a few books and I sold quite a few books. Let's start off how we always start off with the books that I hauled this past month. This past month, I ended up purchasing book three and four in the Feel Rich Vampire series by Geneva Lee. I purchased these off of Vinted. The first two books in the series I flew through, so I just wanted to pick up the next two because I did enjoy the first two and I do plan to finish this series. And it honestly feels like one that's just going to be super manageable for me to finish sometime soon. And then finally, I feel like I've been waiting for this to come out for the longest time. I got my hands on the Waterstones exclusive paperback edition of A Curse for True Love by Stephanie Garber. I've been waiting for this to come out in paperback paperback if you don't know in the UK we always we get books in hardback prior to them coming out in paperback and you have to wait almost like a year yeah I own the Waterstones exclusive paperback editions of the other two copy uh, of the other two books in this series so I was waiting rather patiently for this edition and I just love it I think they're really cute the fold out pages with the quotes on um yeah this is not a series that I am absolutely obsessed with However, it is a series I definitely want to finish and round out and I am curious to see how this book ends. Okay, and then the last book that has entered my collection, um, which I actually don't know what I've done with the dust jacket for off the top of my head right now, um, but it was of Jade and Dragons by Amber Shen. This is the first ever Lee McRae or book box subscription book that I have ever purchased or received um i got to the top of the alima crate waiting list in the uk and i decided to just go for it and this is the first book that i've got and this is just stunning honestly i just cannot believe it the printed hardback is just absolutely gorgeous absolutely gorgeous i feel like i'm showing this off in like almost every book video at the moment but Alas, yes, this was the last one to join my book collection this month. Okay, the book stack <laughs> I read this month is actually insane. The first book that I read in June was Love Redesigned by Lauren Asher. Um, this is her the first book in her new billionaire Lakefront Billionaires series. Um and do you know what? This brought a lot to the table for me. I really did enjoy this book. I thought it was so good. And it just gave me all the feel good uh, feelings. I really felt like they were such a great couple. And I really enjoyed the fact that they were kind of childhood best friends to enemies to lovers. Uh, well, to friends to lovers. And I just thought that he was such a great character. I have learned recently that I am such a fan. I hate calling it this, but this is like the trope, I guess, that it's known as. I love me a golden retriever male main character. I think I gave it four stars. I honestly feels like, it feels like it was a long time ago since I read this. I can't believe that I read this in June. I it feels like it was last month i'm not gonna lie to you the okay, next book that i read this month was the serpent and wings of night by carissa broadbent i really really enjoyed this however and i will i have a reading vlog coming out um in a couple of weeks that you guys will see um but i do have a bit of a rant about this book because people suggested to read this for people who loved uh Akatar. now i personally just disagree because just because the characters have wings does not make it the same premise as Akatar. Please, oh please, oh please, do not put that as why you recommend this to someone. Just say there's similarities between the the um, features of characters in this book. I really enjoyed this. I really enjoyed the heist of it. I think I gave it 
five to four stars. I enjoyed it. It was really quick, really quick and easy read. I'm very excited to finish off this. However, in the UK right now, we only have the hardcover of the second book. So I'm hoping that this paperback will be out, but I think I might have to wait until next year now to get the paperback of the second book, which is kind of sad, but I am, I'm excited to finally get around to reading it when I do. This is the Crowns of Nixia series by her. Next up, I didn't have a lot of time. So I ended up just finishing off the rest of the Tokyo Ghoul volumes that I currently own. I only own two volume three, so I've already read volume one, so I just read volume two and volume three. Really enjoyed this. These two volumes, things really picked up for me, and I actually enjoyed these more than I did the first volume. I'm gonna get I gave these four stars each. And I just thought the story was a lot more interesting and we found a lot more out. Uh, we understood a lot more about the ghouls and we also had the first fight scene in these, which I very much enjoyed finally picked up iron flame i was 370 pages through this book for the longest time since i think november last year so literally i've taken six months break out of this book and this was just like in november last year was just when i had that really weird mental health time where i was just having a really hard time and i just stopped reading loads of books and recently this year i've been finishing off those books in the last like two to three months that I never actually got around to reading, uh, well, to finishing in the month of November. I liked this. Now, I know this gets, I feel like this has like a fair amount of hate, but I personally did enjoy it. I just felt it was a bit chaotic and the ending has kind of irritated me, but for reasons that I can't explain unless you've read the books, so it's spoilers. But the ending, I guess because it didn't feel like it had to happen, but then I think maybe that's that's something that we might have a flashback to in the third book. I am excited for the third book. I have pre-ordered the third book. I will still purchase it in hard play it in hardback. But I will say I felt more of a disconnect between uh Violet and Zayden in this book. I just didn't I wasn't obsessed with them in this book. If anything, actually they were just pissing me off. Um I enjoyed the first like 300 pages, but them near the end were just so frustrating like just talk to each other in here there, there is just one big miscommunication trope in my opinion like the amount of times they could have just talked to each other and things would have been resolved and they would have understood what, they, what was going on with each other would have been a million times better and honestly they're both just as bad as one another and it's frustrating but does it do, will i still be reading the next book in the series when it comes out in january hell yes i think what it is is when someone people love the first book in the series we really kind of heighten our expectations for the next one and actually it's very difficult to have five star series back to back to back so five star books in a series back to back to back so actually it's fine to have one that's lower than the other i think fourth thing i gave five stars to this one's getting three three and a half then i read the nanny by lana ferguson i read my first lana ferguson last month and I read The Fake Mate by her. And I actually really enjoyed that book, unpopular opinion, but I personally enjoyed that book a lot. And this one was on my TBR prior to that, but I ended up picking this one after afterward, after The Fake Mate. And I, I, again, I really enjoyed this. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, it's got, again, single dad trope, but this one's so juicy because there's an OnlyFans. So basically they knew each other, they've seen each other before on OnlyFans um, from being viewers, from him being a viewer of her OnlyFans, which is just such an interesting subplot. Um, but it's also really interesting why she was doing that and what her life is like. Um, and I just think, I don't know, the kid in here was adorable. Their relationship was really, really good. I'll say with this one, the kind of resolved from the third act the res the what's it called the reconciliation after the third I don't know if that's the right word after the third act conflict was just way too quick for the words that were said and words I personally think can do quite a lot of damage emotionally to someone um and I just I don't know after what she said I feel like it was just very easy and very quick wrap up like I think it was like four pages of wrap up once said thing was done and I just felt a bit frustrated by that in all honesty next book a Game of Retribution by Scarlet Sinclair. We just need a moment of silence for this book. This edition is fine, like look how floppy it is. But this book, this series is so quick, so easy to read. But my goodness, the quality has gone down. I did not feel 
any chemistry between Hades and Persephone in this story. I just felt pure fucking frustration at the pair of them. It was almost ridiculous. Just sit and talk to each other. My God, this is worse than Zayden and Violet in Iron Flame. I think I gave this two stars. I either gave, I think, yeah, I did. I gave it two stars. I will continue the series because I am three books deep. Um, but if I don't enjoy the next book, I'm gonna be so put off. I would love to finish the series by the end of the year. The next book was Another Dud. This is Crime and Punishment by Fodjo Doskieski. I don't know if I said that right. Um, this was just a hot mess of stress. Express. I liked the first 150 pages. I actually was enjoying the first 150 pages and it just steadily, 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 steadily went downhill from there. Um, so much ranting. And as someone who took an A-level in English literature and language, I can appreciate the purpose behind the rambling. However, for reading it for enjoyment and not kind of like academic or like study reasons, I wouldn't recommend it. And this is really disappointing because this is like the first ever classic that I picked up because it just sounded interesting to me and I was so intrigued by the premise. But honestly, no, read yourself a thriller. Read, it, read yourself a thriller. Read yourself a Stephen King, in fact. Read yourself just something that isn't this. I'm really sorry, but it was just too long. It was too long-winded. All the stuff that was talked about was just not necessary to the story. Hey everybody, it's Editing Jest here and I just realised that I completely forgot to mention two books that I read in the month of June that literally were massive and I was so proud of reading and I thoroughly, thoroughly, thoroughly enjoyed and that was Binding 13 and Keeping 13. I read both of these books on the Kindle app which is why I forgot because I had my massive stack of books which was already a lot of books and I also read two massive books further on my Kindle Unlimited app. But yeah, I read uh, Binding 13 and Keeping 13 by Chloe Walsh and I absolutely loved these books. And again, you'll see them later on in a vlog coming out in a couple of weeks time. This series is definitely, uh, or these books are definitely darker than I ever anticipated going into the story. I don't think I was actually aware at all of some of the problematic content or what could be problematic or triggering content in the books and I feel like a lot of people talk about how much they love these books but not about the problematic content or some triggering content that's in there and I'm pretty sure there is a trigger warning but I just wanted to put that out there as well before I recommend it to anyone else there is quite a few triggering my uh there's quite a few um themes that could be triggering to readers. Yeah, I had lots of opinions on this book and there's definitely triggers for domestic violence, emotional abuse, physical abuse, um, responsibility and just everything like that. I will also say that the characters in this book do read much older than they actually are. And if anything, that would be the one thing that I guess I question about these books is that the characters definitely read like they're a lot more mature, like they're a lot more older than what they actually are in the book. And I will say there is definitely some frustration from me in this book because some people knew what was going on in our main character's life and they saw the evidence of what was going on but they never did anything and I understand it's kind of like being in that position of like someone's begging you not to do it but you definitely you know you should and kind of being in that middle zone of like do I don't I do I don't I but I feel like there could be more of a portrayal of like why those people chose not to stand in I don't know and then that's where I feel like they feel as though the characters are as young as they are as in like the friends and things do come across as like they are as young as they are because they don't feel that, that could be the actual reason for these things to be happening but then our main characters don't come across at that age at all it's very very interesting they definitely come across as more mature characters whereas the kind of side characters do come across as like that age range my favorite 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 character in here was Gibbsby I loved him I really felt that all the glimpses that we've had into his life he really does bring a light to the story that I feel that we wouldn't have the story definitely has more of a darker undertone than what I was expecting it's to have um and he really brings that like moment of laughter and that moment of joy that kind of lets you it kind of breaks through the darkness a little bit and makes it even easier to read and that's another thing the writing is I'm not going to say that the writing in this book is phenomenal because I don't think it was 
but it was just so well done considering the topics that were being covered and almost the simplistic writing style was really beneficial to the story. I feel like having any other type of writing style would have made this story just a bit too dark, a bit too much, a bit too overpowering, but the way that the author has written this book, in my opinion, felt really appropriate and also made what could have been a very, very, very difficult dark read into something that is just so easily digestible and that you can finish relatively quickly because I flew through these two books even though they were 600 plus pages. It was crazy but I absolutely loved my time in this in this with these two books and I will be buying the physical copies. I don't own them currently as you can see on my shelves behind me but I will be purchasing them and I will be continuing the series and I am very 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 excited to continue and see what my thoughts and opinions are. And then finally the last book that I read this month was Fear for Rich Vampires Three Queens by Geneva Lee and this one was just so quick so easy to read again this took me no time at all it was 302 pages so it just I just flew through this in one evening um, and I actually really enjoyed this you'll see more of my thoughts and feelings in a late a reading book coming up later um, but yeah I did actually enjoy this one quite a lot and I've enjoyed this series quite significantly. It's going to be another three stars, but I did enjoy this. It's like such a good binging series. And with that, I have read 52 books this year so far. And my yearly goal was 50. So in half a year, I've read 52 books, um, which means I could be on track to read 100 books this year, which is crazy. But I will tell you guys, I have read 4,320 pages this month. That is, that's insanity. I don't even want to do the maths of how many hours that is, but that was mainly in my like evening hours that I've been reading. But yeah, that is actually insane, but also very proud of myself. Like what a humbling experience. Um, but yeah, that is everything for today's video. I really guys enjoyed. And if you did, please like and subscribe to the channel if you're new out here. Let's see more videos from me. And I catch you guys all in my next one. Bye.